Sorry, this is not my normal content. This is just a quick video on how to program Cyberbricks. I was finding it difficult, so once I figured it out, I thought I'd make a quick video on it. Thanks, hope you enjoy. Now, after you've decided which Cyberbrick project you want to make, and you've downloaded all the files and printed them, and are as assembled the hardware using the provided instructions, I can, of course, recommend my skid steer. I think it's quite cool. Then you want to get software. Now, you can just use the provided uh, code, or you can make your own. And here is a quick tutorial on how I made the code for my skid steer. Okay, so to code your Cyberbrick project, you can start by importing a file. These are files that you download from models, like this one I have uploaded. If you scroll down, here are the files you can upload. So, but here we're going to start just creating a new one. Doesn't really matter. This is, I guess, the standard remote. That makes it easy. Um, but for example, if uh, delete, that's gone. You just click there, and then you click which, what I, what you want. We'll put that back. Um, and the same down here. If you want to add a button, you can do so. Now, when it comes, so this is the, the the vehicle unit, and then this is the remote unit. So here you pick, so now just for testing, we've got a motor here, right track, okay, we can rename it, Another left track, we've got our headlights. Now, let's add a, um, another one. We want a continuous servo, um, that's in the wrong spot. Go three continuous server there. So I got two here. Now I'm just going to rename this to be arm because I want that to be my arm. And then over here, I'm going to have my bucket. There we go. So we've got arm and bucket. We've got our drive motors. Um, we'll leave this one empty for now because we only got one set of lights going in this test configuration. To make all this work, we will need to connect hardware. You need to make sure that your computer has Bluetooth, and then you need to turn on the Cyberbrick modules. Uh, preferably turn them on one at a time. I'm going to start by turning on my remote. Now, up over here, I just turned on the remote. RC module. Confirm, wait for the light to flash. Okay, I can see it's flashing. Let's connect this. Let's say zero, 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 zero. Now it wants to do an upgrade. Okay. Now, I did the remote first so I could know to put it in the remote spot. I'm not sure how important that is. Now I'm going to flip the power switch on the vehicle. The device should now be powering on, so I am going to go look for it. We found another RC module. Confirm. Waiting for the light to blink. It's blinking. Confirm. It's going to do the same thing. So now we're going to drag this and drop it over here. But now if it doesn't grow green and just will not stay ghosted and does not let you put this here, then just restart your computer. But it's working for me, which is great because I can continue making this video. So now we got to wait for this to update again. This is fairly normal. Okay, now that the update is done and we have our two devices here, we can pair the devices. There, pairing successful. Okay, nice. So now that we have our device connected, at any point we can hit send to machine. Oh, the remote is going to sleep. I'm just going to hit a stick to wake it up. 
just move a joystick up and down, it should wake up again. It has an auto sleep function. You can turn that off over here. But now that we have the controller set up, let's go back here to reset. Now at any point, you can test it out by hitting send. Just know it always seems to, every time you hit send, it also seems to save. And so whatever you do is non, whatever changes you make are kind of permanent. So what I recommend doing is always work on a file that, and then export it as what you actually want to use and confirm because I've had some issues with just saving. Whenever you go up and click this home button, it takes you back to here and it does seem to unpair the devices. So just be warned that then you'll have to connect hardware again. So if you to edit and hit connect hardware, but let's head over to manage devices. And this is save that. And now let's save this one as There we go. Okay, we've changed the names. So now let's go back to here. Let's go back to edit. And now we have, if we go back here, we have to reconnect the hardware. But even if we didn't rename it, just the fact that we go back out to here and we hit edit, we got to reconnect the hardware. So just know that every time you hit the home button, you have to hit reconnect hardware. And just, that's easy to do once you've done it once. Move the remote over, remove that over. Um, just to check. See, can we put the car? No, it won't let us put the car on this side. That's great. Okay, now you just hit pair. Now we're good to go and we can hit send code. But let's go back to the code. Now. There we go. Now we have our two servos. This is the code we set up for the skid steer. So we need one for the arm and one for the bucket. And at this point, um, here we can change the speed of our motors, which can be helpful if you don't want it to go full speed. I do change the speed of the tilting of the bucket if you want it to match up and tilt at the same speed so it stays level. But now there's a really amazing code this user put a comment on my skid steer with some great code and it lets you change the speed of the motors while you're playing using the three-way switch so that's just really phenomenal so we will just quickly implement that all we have to do for that is oh and uh he said his comment is down here right here anyways this here is um, the code that Cyberbrick has officially has for this. And so if we just go in here to the motor, I believe this is what he used to make that, but that's outside of the scope of this video. We're going to go back to our software here. And so what he said to do is we add code. Let's add edit. Now here we're setting the speed to 35. I found that this was his recommended speed and it works great. I found anything below 20, the motors don't even have really enough power to turn, at least with the skid steer. So let's keep going. Let's add a medium speed. It's the same code, except this time we've set the speed to 60. Now let's add a high speed. Edit code. There, now we have the code done. And now everything in here, should be good oh yeah let's change these headlights let's change this make it more simple so headlights let's say on let's say we need we're only using two lights for this project we're going to keep it steady we want it white is on let's say off uh, we have no lights selected so none of them will be if they'll be turned off there now let's uh, say blue, these two, steady. This will just be an indicator of the different speed profiles. So let's set that to blue. Okay, steady, good. Now we're going to 
do yellow for a medium speed. Let's go with yellow. Just as a visual indicator of which speed you're in. And now let's add uh, red for like hazards or something. So we'll leave this at blinking. Let's set it to infinitely so it'll infinitely flash. There we go. Now, all the rest that we're going to be doing is up here in the remote. So, here it's very easy. You can delete things. You can delete as much as you want. You can also add whatever you want to add. But the standard remote for at least what we're doing is going to be standard, and we're going to be using the standard layout if you had extra sticks or something. But we're going to be using what's already here. We don't have any extra buttons we need to add. So now, let's go here to left shoulder button. I like to change this to press so people don't have to think about it. Headlights. Let's add here. We want on, off, and let's do blinking. So now, when you hit that button, it'll cycle between those three options. But we're also going to come up here to the shoulder button or the shoulder switch to the three position switch and this is where we'll have it change the speeds so every time you change speeds it will turn the lights on to indicate which speed it's at but that can be overridden at any time by the other button so let's go in and do that quickly so let's say position one let's say code let's say slow speed let's add another one of those let's say lights slow speed was blue okay now let's go to the medium position let's go code Let's say medium speed. Let's give that a light as well. Let's say lights, medium, let's say, no, yellow. Then let's go to position three. Same thing, code, full speed. And let's give that a color. And I chose white just because if you're going fast, you'll want to be able to see as far ahead of yourself as possible. So there, now we've done that. Go to the left stick. Now, we're going to go with single stick mode, but if you go with the two stick mode, this is what it would look like. Oh, that's the right stick. Um, same thing, kind of. So for left stick, we would go with um, and this and this. So then we're moving the bucket, and then we are moving the vehicle. So this is what we'd use with the one stick. It would go up and down, would move you forward and backward, and then here would move your bucket up and down. But if you're going to use that, um, then, and the opposite here for the other side, for the right stick. But when you do this with the two-stick mode, because you're moving the bucket and driving, uh, it's highly, highly recommended to come here and increase the dead zones because you don't want to be accidentally moving the bucket while you're driving forward if you accidentally just slide your stick a little bit to the one side. So you want to make sure that you increase the dead zone, set it to something like a 1,000. It's a good idea. But anyways, we're doing the one stick driving in this tutorial, so let's do that. First thing we're going to want to do, let's say X. Let's say right track negative. Now, let's say X again, left track, negative. Now, this will make you turn because the motors, when you build a thing, are set flipped. So, we're going to set this to negative. That would be our turn. Now, on the Y stick, we want to move straight forward. So, we're going to go with the right track and we're going to say positive. And then we're going to add the left track, and this time we'll say negative, and that will make us drive straight. And so there, and now we'll do go to the other stick. This is going to be our arm controlling stick. Delete both of these, start over. Negative, and then let's say X, and that'll be our bucket. Let's set this as negative as well. 
negative and positive just change which direction it is, so which way the stick will pull to move it. This should be the proper way to do it for realism. As far as I know, most skid steers, when you pull the stick inwards, the bucket moves towards you, and so on and so forth. So there we go. And now here, oh yeah, we already set that. Now we've done this. Now under single axis joystick, I had done some tempor um, temporary stuff, but we don't need that for now. And there we go. Now, every time you hit say it send to device, it seems to save. So what you want to be careful about is before you do that, if you want to keep this configuration, I highly recommend export it as something new. And then uh, when you hit send, it'll be saving it to the new profile. Theoretically, I've had some issues with saving and it not being the file I was expecting because it saves to the one. When you hit send code, there we go. Now it's not actually done until this stops spinning. So just be warned until this stops spinning. It hasn't actually uploaded it all the way there. Now it's set and it will actually work. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Now, if you're interested in these cyber bricks, don't forget to check out maker world and the cyber bricks. And here's going to be some footage of my skid steer and little other cyber brick vehicles. Hope you enjoy. Have a wonderful day. Thanks. This guy in town is reckless. So, <laughs> what is okay? We gotta go somewhere else where this guy is not. <laughs> All right. What is he doing? Oh my gosh, the barrels are almost falling. This guy is very suspicious. Help! Get us out of Now I just have to push down on that back there. Move. No, he just keeps.